In this video, I'm gonna talk about what you should do if your car is trying to overheat or is overheated. And most of this information is in that video in the top things never to do to your car. If you have a vehicle that the motor is cooled by coolant, first of all, I wanna encourage you, never put tap water in the system. Number two, always put the 50-50 mix or mix it with distilled water as outlined in your owner's manual. Number three, this cooled engine system that requires coolant functions very basic. You have a water pump that will circulate the coolant throughout the motor and through the radiator. You have a thermostat that opens when the motor reaches operating temperature, normally starts to open around 182 degrees Fahrenheit. You have a radiator that once that thermostat opens, the coolant flows through the radiator and back into the motor, which keeps it in the proper operating temperature. And then you have a coolant fan that normally turns on when you're in stop and go traffic and the motor temperature tries to exceed 215 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. First of all, if your car overheated, one of four things has gone wrong. Number one, you've allowed your coolant level in your reservoir or in your radiator to get so low that there's not enough coolant circulating through the motor to keep the motor cool. So if you've lost coolant, you need to find the leak and fix the leak. Hopefully you haven't damaged your motor. The second reason that your car may have overheated could be because the thermostat in your thermostat housing has gotten stuck closed, which is a very rare condition. But thermostats are $20 or less. If your car is overheated or is trying to overheat, get you a thermostat, get that replaced, and see if the condition continues. If the car still tries to overheat when you have coolant in the system and you've replaced the thermostat, you can suspect that a uh, water pump is bad in the car. A third reason that your car may overheat or try to overheat on you is if you're driving in stop and go traffic, you are not getting airflow through your radiator, you're sitting in traffic and you're watching your temperature needle rise on your dash. You know you have good coolant level because you've checked the coolant when the car is cold. Uh, your water pump and your thermostat's working right because while you're driving along, the temperature is fine. The suspect in that condition, if it's trying to overheat when you're in stop and go traffic, is your electric fan is probably not working. When the car warms up to around 215 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, your fan should cut on and draw air through the radiator, which helps keep the car cool and stop it from overheating. Another reason that your car may be overheating is if you have a bad water pump. Typically, if a water pump goes bad, it will leak first, but occasionally they won't leak. I have seen water pumps where the propeller on the water pump fell off inside the motor and if that happens the water pump is no longer circulating water and coolant through the engine and through the radiator so that could cause your car to overheat a bad water pump so those are the primary reasons your car will try to overheat because the system is very basic now if something unfortunate has happened and the car has overheated where you see the temperature needle in the red, the most common thing that happens is the softest part of the motor or the weak link in the coolant system, either a hose will burst because too much hot air pressure got into the motor and it exceeded its allowable uh, temperature and it burst a hose, or your head gasket has breached because your motor got so hot that your softer head warped 
and caused the seal between your head and your engine block to breach, now you have a blown head gasket, which is the death of most cars that's over 10 years old. Now, if you look in the about comments of the video, you'll see a link to a video that tells you how to avoid playing coolant roulette and how to avoid overheating your motor. But uh, in this case, if you've already overheated your motor, what you need to do is determine what caused the motor to overheat, bad thermostat, low coolant level, coolant leak, whatever it is, fix that problem and then test your car for a blown head gasket. Now, a very common way, and you can see a link in the about comments again, pull your oil dipstick. If the oil on the dipstick is not close to clear or more on the black side, and it looks like a coffee with cream in it, or the level has gotten a lot higher than the full mark, you may have a blown head gasket and coolant or water is mixing into the block of the motor which will quickly damage the motor. Another thing you could do to try to find out if you have a blown head gasket is the car will start running rough or it'll fail to start because you will be getting coolant in the cylinders of the car where the spark plugs are. So you can pull the spark plugs, crank the motor over. If coolant pops out of those uh, spark plug wells, or you see coolant on the tips of the spark plug, you more than likely have a blown head gasket. Another thing you could do is pull the oil cap and look down into the motor where the oil goes. If there's a lot of coffee with cream looking liquid in there, you probably have a blown head gasket because it all should be dark oil, nothing chocolatey looking. Another thing you could do to check for coolant mixing with your oil is drain your oil into a clean drain pan. If it's not dark black oil that's drained into that drain pan, but it looks like milk chocolate, then you likely have a blown head gasket. Now, some cars, the head gaskets blow easier than others. A Volvo is one of those where it can overheat one time and blow the head gasket. The strange thing is, these cars can drive and run well with a minor head gasket leak or breach, and it's hard to detect it. So, in that case, this is what you want to do to figure out if your car has a blown head gasket. This is not a 100% test, but this is how you can lead yourself to know that. Number one, when the car is cool, you check the level in the coolant reservoir. You wanna bring that level to the minimum mark at least, not over the maximum mark. You close the hood, you start the car, you drive for 10 or 15 minutes, get the car warmed up to temperature. Then you get out of the car with the motor still running and you come and look at the level in that reservoir tank. If that level is rising, there's a good chance that combustion air is getting past the head gasket and forcing hot combustion air into the coolant passengers of the motor. When that happens, it forces the coolant out of the motor and into your coolant reservoir so your level on your coolant reservoir will be rising. Now, if your level's rising, first thing you wanna do is look at your cap, make sure it's on good and tight, and look at the top of the cap, make sure there's no cracks in the top of the cap. Because if the cap is damaged or cracked, or one of the old gray type ones, it may let coolant escape out of there under normal conditions. Now, if you have a good cap and it's on tight, that level should not be rising. Close the hood, drive another five or 10 minutes. Just pull over, pop the hood. If you see that the level is coming out of the cap area and sometimes spraying around on the area around it, chances are the combustion gases are filling up the coolant tubes, forcing your coolant out of your reservoir 
And unfortunately, even though your car is running well, you have a bad head gasket. Now, there's a way that you can verify that if you want to go one step further. You go to an auto parts store and you get a test kit. Sometimes they'll loan it to you, but it, it checks the coolant for combustion gases in the coolant. You suck some of the coolant up into that tester kit. Then you mix some fluid into the coolant that you sucked up into the test kit. And if there's exhaust gases in the coolant, it will cause the coolant in your tester to change colors. I think it goes blue or something like that. So if it all of a sudden changes to a certain color, you know that you're getting exhaust gases into your coolant and you now have a damaged motor, blown head gasket, that you need to decide uh, if you're going to fix it or scrap the car. Now, the reality of it is you can overheat your car one time and damage your motor to the tune of $2,500 to $5,000. So you never want to overheat your car. Look at the link in the about section that talks about uh, how the coolant system works and how to avoid overheating your car. Thanks for watching. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.